What we're going to talk about in this video is the game of business, specifically the game of business growth, but probably not in the way that you're considering growth, or at least considered it before watching this video. It was a way that I certainly hadn't considered business growth prior to the model that I'm going to share with you guys being shared with me by one of my early mentors. The reality of it was is that I looked at business growth as top line because I'd see guys when I just started out that had $2 million a year businesses or $5 million a year, $20 million a year businesses. And I thought that's really where I want to go because to me, that was my measuring stick of how good I was as a businessman to be able to get those big numbers at the top line. But as I got further into the game of business and started figuring a few things out, one of the things that I started recognizing in a lot of the peer groups that I was in is that it wasn't uncommon for one of the guys that had a $2 million company to be taking home more money for himself and his family than somebody who had a $20 million company. And recognizing that, that really the bottom growth is where the reality of being a really good entrepreneur sits, I'm so glad that I got shown this model. It's one of those where if I'd learned it 10 years before the mentor that I had showed this to me, there would be a few more million dollars in my bank account. So this is the simplest process of improving a business, specifically improving the bottom line of a business, which is really, I'm going to have you consider all you should care about when it comes to the actual growth of it. And I'm going to write out the model now, and it comes in four specific parts. The first part of it is your assets. All right, your assets, it's a balance sheet line item. It's basically your things and your stuff. Your things could be if you sell a product, it could be your inventory. If you've got a service-oriented business, your assets could very well be the man hours that you've got available to allocate towards delivering that service to the marketplace. That's what your assets are. From your assets, what you've got is you've got revenue, which is the second piece. Revenue is the amount of money that you make by converting your assets. So if you've got products, then it's about how many of those products you sell for how much that converts it into revenue. If you've got a service and your assets are man hours, then it's how much can you sell those man hours for to create the maximum amount of revenue that you can bring into your business. Then the third piece of it is profit. And if you're watching to this point and thinking like, yeah, that's all basic stuff. Wait till you see how it's ultimately connected. Profit is how much you get to keep out of the revenue that you make. This is where you wind up making money. Seems easy enough, right? But profit is just a theory because profit's a number on an income statement. You can't spend your profit. What you can spend though is you can spend cash. So cash is what you actually collect. So let's say that you've got accounts receivable and your accounts receivable is on a 30 day timeline. You might show profitability on that if you're running an accrual financial statement, which by the way is the only financial statement that you should ever run as a business owner. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you have the cash in the bank because having the cash in the bank is what you actually get to either take home for yourself or reinvest into more assets to produce more revenue, to produce more profit, which is going to produce more cash if you are good at moving from the stages. Now, the key here that showed me, kind of like opened my eyes, was it was the progression in moving from one stage to another. It was how do my assets convert into revenue? And then how does my revenue convert into profit? And then how does my profit convert into cash? Now there's a measurement in, a, in the system and how this works is really what this is a measurement of is this is a measurement of how effective you are. As we're going from assets to revenue, 
How effective are you at converting your assets into revenue? This might mean that you're really, really efficient at turning every asset that you have into revenue, but this could also mean that you're doing a good job of leveraging the assets you have to do the maximum amount of revenue. So in the service business example, let's say that you were going to charge $50 an hour for your employees to go do whatever work they were going to do, but instead you figured out a way to charge $100 an hour. What that does is it improves the leverage and your effectiveness between your assets and your revenue. The second measure that we've got to get to is how efficient you are. How efficient you are from your revenue to your profit. This is spending the minimal amount or investing the minimal amount to give, to deliver your product, your service, your experience to the marketplace. And the less that you have to spend in terms of your resources, which is your assets, you're going to be more efficient bringing down to your profit. This is one of the things where I was just like, okay, this is the measure of how good you are at a business person. It's not your top line revenue. It's not your $2 million company, your $10 million company, your $20 million company. It's simply this. How effective are you at turning your assets into revenue? How efficient are you at turning your revenue into profit? And then the final piece of it is how productive How productive are you at turning your profit into cash? Meaning how quickly does it go from the stage where it's just on your books as profit into actual cash into your bank account that you can spend? This is the model. This is the simplest model for company performance. This is part of an ultimate blueprint when it comes to how businesses wind up being successful. So if you are good at taking your assets and being effective in turning those into revenue, being efficient at turning that revenue into profit and being productive at turning that profit into cash, then you can have a smaller business, but still make more and take home more than the guys who have the very, very biggest businesses. So I hope this model helps you understand at least how to go. And really what this is designed to do is I was doing about a million dollars in revenue when I first encountered this model. And this is what took me to three and four and five uh, through a number of different businesses that I've run over the period of time that I've been an entrepreneur, which is spanning about two decades right now. So this works. I want you to go implement this, figure out how this works inside of your own business. And I promise you, you are going to make more money in the next 12 months than you have in the last 12 or maybe even the last 24 months.